totally worth it. You know, it's a hero that often you need sentries and dust. One or the other isn't sufficient. I think Disruptor maybe changes that a little bit because of kinetic field. You can't just run over the trees, but um, still, that investment can be quite large. So even if you kill him a couple or, you know, three or four times in lane even, Brood's a hero that can recover and still just soak up your jungle so quickly when you're team fighting or, you know, pushing elsewhere on the map. Yeah, I'm, I'm really going to have my, my eye on the Brood, as it were, to see you know how he deals with this but for the moment it seems like og are actually gonna dodge and they're gonna put it in the 1v1 yeah so they're gonna they've given s4 like a ton of regen or i guess he just buys a ton of regen on his own and i guess what probably happens is both heroes just creep cut is this a first blood dazzle's in a lot of trouble they've got the damage he skills up heal instead of grave they've got another ensnare from the naga siren and now this ember spirit he's also in trouble Jesus. it's a twofer it's a BOGO! Buy one, get one, bottom lane, Draskal. That is definitely not what you want. And I don't think they were expecting this lane setup either. I think they were kind of hoping that it would just be standard lanes, but... It does mean that Shadow is going to get the matchup in the middle lane with the troll, so... A lot better of a matchup, I think, than putting the Invoker against Ember, because again, Tornado can just dispel the uh, Flame right. Guard whenever. But at the same time, it puts Blink in kind of a sacrificial role because if they keep this tri lane down here, it doesn't even matter if the Brood wins his lane at that point. It's more just like a matter of, okay, our Ember is going to get totally shut down. He's going to be under leveled and under farmed. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Naga, I think, has a little bit more flexibility because the Ember is the one who has to kind of, you know, dictate the mid game tempo. He's kind of their biggest damage hero and their initiator. Right. Oh, down bottom. Stun onto No Tail. Getting kind of low here, but Glimpse back will keep them alive. Blink doing a lot of damage with this Flame Guard, but now it expires, and oh it's the God. Dazzle that's in trouble. He's still only level 1. Jerax winning this boxing match, but he can't quite finish him off. He, he will go down instead. And it's actually a kill the other way. Team Random, they survive through it, and Dazzle will sustain back up. He's got a couple of Tangos here, so he should be good. Maybe he thought that he wasn't actually going to be able to get the last hit. I don't know, that was weird. Like, he had the Orb of Venom on him. He was, like, running him down. He had the Wind Lace as well. Or I guess maybe he bought that after he died. Yeah, I think he bought it after he died. So mm -hmm. maybe he was just unsure if he could get, get the last auto attack off and then just like bailed, ends up getting himself killed. It's pretty unfortunate. Yeah. So for now, though, this is pretty good for S4, right? At least in these earlier levels. He can kind of bully this lane. He can at least farm, pull aggro on the creeps, and contest the neutrals, as we're seeing here. Looking at the CS difference, Brute is winning, but by pretty small margins. So you know, even if Faith Beyond gets farm. S4 is guaranteed to at least get uh, an okay laning phase. Better than the jungle. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if Faith Beyond is uh, super comfortable in this matchup. But I guess time will tell. What makes you say that? Is he feeding spiders or something? No, no, no. He, he hasn't fed any spiders, but in the first few waves, it is the hardest part of the matchup, I think, for Brood. But as you get more levels and more spiders, actually, hold that thought. And a middle lane. Oh, and also down bottom, they're looking to fight. Ana eats the fairy fire, almost survives, but Shadow does finish him off. The tower, not quite enough. Now back down bottom, and a little too slow. The Ember Spirit will fall. So one, one for one across the map, both teams losing some cores. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is what I was expecting out of the lane. You know, the, the Brood has to start to ignore the Axe, because you can't just contest them on the creep wave, right? So you just get your spawn spiderlings going. You hit the creeps, you just farm, he farms, and eventually, you know, you get six, and then he has to either TP out or he needs help. Right. Okay. Well, still a couple levels to go here. Down bottom, initiation onto the Ember Spirit again, only level two, but Dazzle's here. He does have the Shallow Grave, he pops it out. That'll buy Blink a little bit of time, but I think he's still dead here. No Tail just waiting it out. Two more auto attacks, and they'll find it. Jerax now getting low. Dazzle almost brings him down. Ice Ice does not have the damage with the stun, but it is Y that's able to finish him off. Now Fly heading back towards the tower. No Tail out of mana. That's where it will end. The one for one. But core for support. I think OG will take it. I mean, the thing about this lane is the Ember is still technically farming a little bit better than No Tail. But he's also died three times, and no tail has two kills. So, regardless of how much CS you're getting in the situation, I, I don't know if Random can afford to keep this lane down here. You know, I, I think it was almost to a degree better when they sent Ice Ice to the middle lane and they got the kill on the Invoker. You just have to be a little bit more 
on point with your communication because when you show the Earthshaker, of course, if there's a tri lane bottom, they're going to run at your safe lane hero. Like, you got to communicate that, okay, we're going on the Invoker, you got to back. Otherwise, you're just going to get punched by a freaking tree and die. Mm -hmm. Mid lane going very well for the troll. 28 last hits compared to the 10 of the Invoker. Huge margins there. Uh, of course, dying does set him back quite a bit, but. Uh, Troll absolutely dominating at this point. Up top, S4. Can he get sandwiched a little bit here? Faith Beyond on the way in. Dazzle does not have Poison Touch, so no way to slow him down. However, Earthshaker does have a stun. going to be a close call here. The heal bomb from Dazzle, not going to be enough. Meanwhile, down bottom, Blink dies again. The aggro try from OG gets yet another kill. And that's even after wasting all that time. Again, it's just about, you know, the support shows somewhere else on the map. OG kills Blink. Happens every single time. Unfortunately, he hasn't really been able to play far enough back to avoid those situations, but for the time being, he's just getting brutalized now. I mean, sure, mid is going super well for Team Random, but Invoker is kind of one of those heroes that can recover. You know, he can go to the jungle, throw out sun strikes across the map like you were talking about, lots of stuns, things yeah. that hold you in place, and he can contribute. The Ember actually has to physically be in the fight, and then he also has to be farming at the same time. So it's a lot harder for him to make that comeback than it is for Ana. That's true. One of the other aspects about the Ember Spirit as well is to do damage, he has to be in the front line. So if he's not higher level, if he doesn't have an item advantage, it's just easier to say, okay, he's not intimidating, we're just going to turn and right-click him instead. And that's when Ember really feels like he can't get a lot done. Now Jarex down bottom, takes some damage from Ice Ice, but no tail is nearby. We'll just head back to the tower and everything will be... Just fine. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Jarex scouts Blink rotating over. And they won't have the resources to go for a kill. Ana farming the jungle now, opening up for Fly to soak up some XP in the mid lane. This is something that you see OG do pretty commonly. Give space to the supports any time that the jungle is being utilized by another core. Well, it makes sense in this case because, you know, Ana was already struggling anyway. And to be honest, farming the jungle when he's losing mid this badly is probably better because that yeah. way like you mentioned you know fly is at least getting something out of it and even though he's not going to be hitting creeps he wouldn't be hitting creeps anyway so getting that six obviously going to be really nice for him if they can manage to do it but he is making his way towards the top lane maybe a little bit yeah. worried about s4 dazzle now level four he picks up that poison touch and how's the brood mama doing pretty close to level six and has the phase boots and, and whoopsie. Blink actually gets a return kill. Nice. Yep. On no tail uh, of all heroes. Missed that one. Sorry, gang. <clears throat> Sleepy time here. I need to wake up. Come on, it's only 4 a.m. You've had yeah, longer nights than this. Yeah, it's really not that bad. Tunnel vision. Yeah, so for, for the moment, uh, Shadow is definitely the glimmer of hope here for Team Random. And I suppose, you know, Faith Beyond, he's getting his farm. S4 is getting farm as well. He's just got a lot of denies. Like He's been able to pretty much get every single deny on the creep wave because you never really want to walk into the axe to go for the CS. That's why it's like so important for the brood to be creep cutting because you don't want the axe to be able to drag your creep wave with him on top of where you're farming. That's like the, the worst case scenario for him. And yeah. then the middle lane fly is still soaking up some EXP. And Jarex is pretty much doing the same. I guess Blink has made the transition into Iron Talon pretty common when you're getting shut down really hard in lane to do this yeah you just want to make sure that you can you know farm the jungle kind of effectively as the supports have kind of dissipated and are just kind of trying to be effective get some levels maybe get some arcane boots if you can either ice ice or why but yeah things pretty quiet at the moment yeah started as kind of a bloodbath and now things really quieting down looks like s4 will go for the vanguard first great choice against the brood instead of just rushing blink but you be a little more aggressive and just spam out those right clicks Pull creep aggro anytime you want. Also lets you farm in the jungle really quickly. It's a great farming tool for Axe. Yeah, I used to see this a lot too when uh, you used to be able to stack every minute. Feels like ages ago that you could do that. I but know, right? <laughs> you used to buy Vanguard and then one of your supports would like quad or quintuple stack the Ancients and you would just get like a thousand gold. And Jerex solo down bottom on the tree. Just about to be level 5. And finally, we're seeing Team Random put pressure on this tier 1 tower. Ice Ice, level 5 on the Earthshaker. So pretty close to that point in the game where Ultimate's about to come out on some of these supports. Might open up some team fight potential. 
I mean, the ultimate on the Earthshaker is not really a huge deal because he only yes. has one point into Aftershock. They are going to go for a smoke, though. True. So they're going to go for the gank onto Ana again. Yeah, Earthshaker, amazing with these kind of scenarios to try to block him out. But Tornado connects on two. Very nicely done. Still Shadow able to close the gap. And a follow-up Fissure is more than enough. Shadow gets another kill, furthering his net worth lead. Almost doubling that of the Invoker. Like 80% up on him. This is... One of the most one-sided mid matchups I think we've seen yet so far, Andy. It's really hard for Invoker, uh, I think, in this matchup. And also, he's been ganked twice, so that's definitely not helping the cause. Yeah, certainly not. Overall, what are we looking at here? And it's random with a, about a 1,200 net worth lead. A small experience edge for OG. I think some of that because No Tail's been sending so much time in the jungle. Oops. Working towards the Radiance. Only 1,200 gold, so still a ways to go, but he's keeping up. Naga, middle of the pack. You know, he's on pace for a reasonably timed Radiance. Yeah, S4 has actually done way better in this matchup than I was expecting. I don't know... Oh, man. His spiders are getting murdered, too. I guess they have the sentry down, so they're able to reliably get calls on it. Like, Faith Beyond's actually been pretty good about not feeding his spiders in the lane, but he has been... Uh kind of bullied a bit more so than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. But I guess he just didn't want to risk pulling heroes up here, because if that happens and it's really, really difficult for him, he's going to help the insatiable hunger. Yeah, not going to die, though. Thought they weren't going to uh, were going to commit for it. Meanwhile, they kill the Earthshaker down bottom. Just a two on one. Looks like they just caught him out of position. Disruptor is now level six, though, so he's got Static Storm online ready to rock and roll. They really can't kill this Axe, man. The Vanguard is huge. He's already halfway towards the Blink Dagger. Yeah, and the cool Looking thing Vanguard. about Vanguard, you ahead. don't need Tranquils anymore. So yeah. you can just keep the Vanguard and then go for different pair of boots. What do you like on Axe? What's the go-to boot now? I think Phase is really good. Uh, when you have Phase and you have Battle Hunger on somebody, you're like crazy fast. The other option is obviously just save for bots if you have like a really good game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Bonds are never bad. Rotation up top. Maybe looking for something on the Brood. Jerex does have four dust. He is prepared. They do catch Faith Beyond, but now they need some way to lock him down. Glimpse. They'll lock him in place, and the Sun Strike. Nice follow-up. They'll actually give it to Ana. So important for this Invoker to get some of these recovery kills. Actually great for OG. Now Dazzle, he's lingering around. Fly drops the kinetic field. They'll press forward. It's a three on one. He does not have mana for Grave, though he does have a TP. Y actually trying to finish off Fly, but will not be enough. Axe finishing off all those spiders as well. S4 getting a lot of money there. Meanwhile, No Tail, Song of the Siren. Delays things, gets the shrine, heals up. And Shadow Ice Ice will just retreat. Well, this has been a pretty lackluster brute performance so far, unfortunately, for Faith Beyond. He's not really had much of an impact. He is going for the recovery Midas, I guess. It's going to be like a 14 or a 15 minute Midas. And in the meantime, S4 has almost got a Blink and a Vanguard. So yeah. this pick has not paid dividends at all for Team Random. And it's going to put a lot of pressure, especially on the Troll, for example. And the Amber Spirit, because the, the Blink and the Vanguard combination is going to come out so fast, it just means that he's going to be able to get his Blade Mail on top of that. Right now, OG are feeling, like, pretty confident, I would say, with their landing phase, considering even though No-Tail didn't have, like, a great lane, he's still, you know, 2,200 gold on top of Arcanes at 13 minutes in. That's a perfectly respectable time, considering the fact that they pretty much sacked him. So, yeah. I, I'm having a hard time seeing the value in the Brood at the moment. Yeah. I feel you. Uh, I'm really impressed by the Invoker, though. The recovery that you're talking about has now become a reality. The Hand of Midas is up. He's farming away in the jungle. Yeah. Oh, Sunstrike. I heard it somewhere. I don't know where it went, though. Yeah, I couldn't Either way, it, actually. number two on net worth. It's really not too bad. Still pretty far behind the troll. But that's okay. Rotation mid now from three. Set up on the fly. Big follow-up damage, even the Echo Slam. But they will find a clean kill. 
Yeah, these these teams are not holding anything. They they just always use their spells straight away to ensure the kill. And I think most of the time it's the right play. You know, again, level one or uh, Earthshaker ulti when you only have one aftershock, it doesn't really. It's just a little bit of damage. You know, it's like a bonus nuke. It's not really holding anybody in place. Right. Up top, a little damage on this tier one tower. Triant starting to heal it up, but. They're going to need more than that if they actually want to keep it alive. There is a glyph available, and S4 just lets it go. He misclicked because he called but didn't blink. So I'm yeah. guessing he was trying to like call in and blink the spiders after the glyph. But couldn't Maybe get one of the baby spiders hit him or something. Here we go, oh, Shadow nice in the though. Roche pit. Yeah, very smart play. Oh, oh no, Faith Beyond. Set up on the Brood. Yeah, that's going to be a Sunstrike kill. Ana gets another one. This Roche going to help out random quite a bit. Ice Ice trying to make some space for it. He might just have to sacrifice his life. It's a three on one and they'll bring him down. S4 dunks him. No, he doesn't dunk him actually. I heard the sound effect, but I think he just got the spins. No, he dunked him. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, comes off cooldown. I'm such an idiot. What am I thinking? But now Roche is available for the taking. This is actually a disaster for random here, Draskal. Yeah, this is super bad. This is terrible. I thought uh, the troll could actually do it, but they lost the medallion. Well, maybe go for a song steal on Siren. and a song to secure it. Yeah, this, is, this is a good thing. Very well done. No Tail picks up the Aegis. Now they're going to take the fight. S4 jumps forward, jumps on the Ember Spirit. Follow-up damage from Ana. They haven't found any kills yet. Fissure kind of breaks up the fight. Is now S4 on the defensive. Might get brought down here. Blink rejoins the party. They pick up two on the way out. It's not so clean for OG after all. Random get a couple of cleanup kills. It's about 1,000 net worth. Not too bad. Yeah, I, it actually looked like it was going to be going a lot better, to be honest, with that kind of uh, follow-up after the song. But I guess because they use a Sunstrike to actually kill Roshan, which I don't know if it was a, com a completely necessary thing to do because they had the song for a couple more seconds anyway. If they had the Sunstrike for when the Static Storm was up, it would have guaranteed killed the Ember or, you know, whichever hero they cast it on. And then it probably yeah. would have been less likely that, you know, Team Random would have been able to turn that around. So a bit of a mistake there, uh, committing the Sunstrike when it wasn't needed. Or maybe the mistake was committing to the fight after he didn't have spells or mana. Hmm. Either way, yeah. the Team Random managed to walk away with something. And they still have, you know, three of the five top net worth heroes, so... And... Still great for the Naga at the end of it. Picks up the Aegis of the Immortal right at this delicate time where about to grab Relic but still don't have the uh, Radiance. So allows No Tail to very safely farm. You know, doesn't really have to worry about getting ganked. Guess not a huge threat right now anyhow, but just a, a free insurance policy. Blade Mail on the way for Axe. Yeah, that's a super nice thing. He's just going to skip completing the boots. I like this a lot. Um, I think that completing boots on some heroes, especially like Blink Initiators, is not really necessary. Like, you get more value out of being closer to your next big purchase, like a Blade Mail, which Axe wants pretty much 100% of his games. And then later on, when you're, like, super inflated net worth because you have so many kills, then you can just go back to something like Boots of Travel, which is right. what I kind of expect that's going to happen this game. Quite likely. Ember Spirit forced into an alternative build, BOTs into Yule Scepter. I don't think ever a build you really want to go for in an ideal scenario. Uh, Yule's is like... It used to be very common. And then it kind of fell out of favor. And he needs it this game more than anything for a dispel and a way to stop himself from taking damage in Static Storm. Right. Those are the only two like redeeming qualities, I guess, other than being able to cancel a TP after you cast Searing Chains. Yeah, it's but a good it's survivability tool. It, it is, but at the same time... If you use yourself, you're setting yourself up for a Sunstrike, you're setting yourself up <laughs> yeah. for a potential kinetic field, or a Blink Call, or an Overgrowth, or whatever. It's like, yeah. Yules as a defensive item is very bad. It's pretty much only good if the enemy team has like one way to kill you. And OG have fair. multiple. Yeah, it's a fair point. It's just the best of a bad situation. That's the thing. Because he right. needs something, and Lotus Orb won't do anything. He doesn't have the money for BKB, nor does he want to commit the money to buy it right now. So he's got to go for an item that might not be, like, amazing, but it's the best chance he has for the, like, the cost. 
Right. And there is some part of... It's got an easy build-up. You know, guaranteed steps so you can buy it in small pieces. It's a small aspect, but it, it adds up here. Radiance now out on No-Tail. The farming begins for the Naga Siren. A little bit later than maybe ideal. 19 minutes, but... I mean, you say a little mark. bit later, but again, he was kind of left alone for a while, and they're just going to murder Blink Bottom. He yep. just gets exploded by the Axe Call and the Static Storm. Yules did not make a difference. Well, I mean, yeah, you can't Yules yourself while you're Axe Called, so if you die in the stun, it's yep. not much you can do. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. It's a hard game, though, honestly. Like, they, they put him in a, a very rough spot at the beginning. And, you know, to his credit, he's still got you know, a fair amount of net worth, given the circumstances. And he's, you know, level 13, so it's, it's not like he's completely out of the game. But yeah. you would kind of have, have hoped that with as much pressure as they were applying to Blink, that Faith Beyond would be able to do something and, you know, kind of carry the game from the offlane. But I, again, I, I don't necessarily know how often he's played this hero, but it doesn't feel to me like it's something that's within his comfort zone. Yeah. The lead starting to slip from random. The troll was really a big part of it earlier on, but now that No-Tail has his big farming tool, and Flicker not only has Midas, but you know, also the completed Aghanims now, OG are able to farm pretty quickly, and they are finding pickoffs here and there. Axe now closing in on the blade mail. A lot of key items starting to come out. And it is a similar story for the Radiant. BKB now up on the troll. Always a huge pickup. And maybe this will entice the Radiant squad to group up, maybe look for a pickoff. An item that you it's can use to gain momentum. It's a timing for sure. The the one thing is like there's overgrowth and there's axe call and there's ensnare. So I'm kinda looking at this in the sense that it's a necessary purchase. Like he needs the BKB absolutely. But it's really hard to utilize it effectively in the game. Cause what happens if he pops BKB? And then no tail songs, and they just net him. And no one else on his team has a BKB. He's just sitting there. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, right. Yeah, all of a sudden it's a 5v1 while the rest of his team's yeah, asleep. It's, yeah, it's not great. It's really rough. But he's still having like a really good game. Highest net worth. Um, kind of keeping his team afloat, as it were, in regards to the, uh, the money category. Yeah, going for the Manta style. Needed. And Brood was, well, has had this Orchid queued up, but just purchased a Diffusal. Yeah, he's, right he's going Diffusal for... Manta. Yeah. Double Great for chasing people me. down. And also another Hand of Midas now on the Treant. So, players starting to buckle in towards the late game. I mean, not a big surprise when there's a Naga on one side and a Troll on the other, but... Embrace the farming. Yeah, there's no rush for OG. They're going to be feeling pretty confident, I think. Their Naga is getting to the item progression you want her to be at. And Team Random are kind of running around the map right now looking for something. They might lose Ice Ice here. Yeah, smoke he rotation. very far from teammates. Oh, he's got no PP. Sets it up. He does use a Dust. Sunstrike will not be on the mark. Looks like another fight breaking out on the backside, though. Disruptor gets caught, and they'll bring him down there. No tail and S4 going in onto the Ember Troll. BKB gets popped by Shadow, doing a lot of damage to the Axe. But here we go, Song of the Siren and Snare still on cooldown. It's not enough to save Axe. Not exactly the scenario we were picturing, but they set it up with Ana. They kind of missed the combo a little bit. Now No Tail just gets focused down. Ana going to be locked down as well. It's a full team wipe for OG. Sunstrike comes in, will not find any kills, and all five hit the deck. Team fight recap. Not going to be much help here, but. My god, there we go. What a convincing fight. It's a 3k net worth swing. That was completely... Like, that outcome was completely unexpected. Like, the best case scenario from popping the 10 second BKB, the absolute best case is that the ensnare is on cooldown like that, and you're able to run down a, a very important hero with an inflated net worth, and that's exactly what happens. He kills S4 with the BKB. Even with the song pop, they're not able to get the kill. You mm -hmm. know, bottom, they were going for, like, Earthshaker kill, and Ice Ice looked like he was really out of position. Just ends up baiting OG, walking into a shrine fight that they were ill-prepared for. They lose yeah. 
every single hero. Like, I was saying before how, you know, I didn't really feel like the Brood was, was doing that much, but, you know, after a team fight like that, you look at the net worth, and now Faith Beyond's number three. Or, I guess, number yeah. four, technically, but, you know, he's so, going to be up there now. Even with the Naga, and we'll continue to farm as he moves into Manta. The other key problem there, after the Song of the Siren came out, is there was no ensnare. It was still on cooldown, so the troll couldn't be stopped. And, uh, you know, it's just unfortunate timing, but if No-Tail just had that a few seconds earlier, they probably could have saved the axe, and maybe that fight could have gone differently. Still very convincing, looking at the overall graph. A little Loch Ness monster pops up, up to about uh, 4,200 net worth and uh, nearly 7,500 XP advantage for Team Random. Jerax walks into the Dazzle up top, connects with an Overgrowth, Sunstrike, and S4. Will secure the kill. That's a nice pickoff for OG. It'll make a small dent, but they'll need a few more of those to really get control of this game. Yeah, that, that Blink Dagger on Ice Ice is going to be huge as well. Like, yeah, that that is. was such a huge turnaround. Like, they went from being kind of in this position where they're struggling to maintain control of the map to, oh god, we just wiped OG. Like, literally just killed all of them. And now OG are the ones who have, like, this defensive posturing. I mean, sure, the Naga Siren Illusions are going out. They're doing the, the farming thing. <clears throat> But man, that was huge. Shaker with a uh, Shadow Blade queued up. It's pretty common. He, he kind of builds the same item as Magnus, actually. Your Blanks, yeah. your Shadow Blades, your Forest Staffs. Sometimes you see Agonims if the game goes like crazy late or like Octarine or something like that. I guess the Agonims is somewhat viable. It's kind of a luxury item. It's a little bit gimmicky, but it is pretty obnoxious. Up top, Faith Beyond might be in some trouble, but again, it's a bait. Troll comes charging in, destroys the Disruptor. Now Jerax tries to TP home, and he will make it. Axe left behind. A set of pickoffs here for Random. Another pretty good fight. Again, BKB Song of the Siren. The Troll doesn't really seem to care. He just solos the team. Now down in the bottom lane, Ana gets dunked on by Ice Ice. And Shadow will help finish him off. It's three dead all of a sudden across the map. That was OG a really nice trouble there from Shadow. Well, the, sure the thing is, like, Anna gets put into this, like, false sense of security because he sees a TP and he knows the troll BKB. Oh, they might find Blink. Okay, defensive ghouls. And he's out. And okay. out. So, when he TP'd and Anna realized there was no BKB, if he hits that tornado, he actually. You know, if the Earthshaker wasn't there, he thinks to himself, I'm going to kill this troll if I hit this tornado. And then he kind of wants to stick around because he knows the BKB is down, ends up dying, gives away Roshan as well to a team random. My goodness. The last, like, five to eight minutes of this game has been unbelievable turnarounds from team random. And, like, the Earthshaker is actually coming in pretty huge. One of those heroes that is, is hard to make look nice, but he's doing it. Blink. Guess he didn't want to go for the kill there. Oh, he didn't have detection. Never mind. I thought for some reason that he had dust, but he doesn't. <laughs> All right. Slow and steady. Now that they have the Aegis, maybe uh, finish off some of these outer towers. Still a tier one standing down bottom for OG. The random could definitely start commencing a bit of the five man. They are farming very nicely here. Maybe just wait for the Scotty on Troll Shadow. About halfway there. And still out farming the Naga Siren. Yeah, this troll is massive. Like, sure, No Tail didn't have the the safe lane or anything like that. He didn't get the the usual position one pampering or anything. But to be ahead of a Naga for this long, still impressive. So, for now, you know, Team Random they they kind of hold the I guess team fight advantage. They're going for it. Oh, here we go. Initiation on the Invoker. That's really where it starts. No-Tail pops the Song of the Siren, but it's kind of far back. It doesn't really do a hell of a lot. I guess it's enough to break up the fight, so we'll call it a success. Shadow does not use the BKB. I don't think he ever even got put to sleep. So they do disengage. Whoopsie. Meanwhile, up top, they do catch S4, and Jerax could still go down. They have a Sentry Ward, but he's not dusted. All right, so random still get a pick off at the end of it. I mean, uh, that's kind of what you expect in the Brood versus Axe matchup after some time is, you know, the Axe blink calls you, but with Insatiable Hunger, 
It's 140 damage and 140 life steal, which means that you are pretty much getting a DD rune, and you're healing more than you hit for, which is like an insane amount at this stage in the game. <laughs> yeah, truly is. Here we go. Initiation onto the Naga Siren does not have the ultimate down for another 60. No tail oh, gets blown God. up by the Dazzle. And that's that heal bomb we were talking about. Now Naga Illusion's getting finished off. Brood caught by the combo from Invoker. Ghost Walk. Ana might still be able to survive here. Fly comes in with a kinetic field. Locks him in place. Sentry Ward does get dropped, but Invoker able to survive. Again, random. Getting the high value prize. It's a dead Naga. All the while, Shadows in the bottom lane split pushing this tier one. Jerax. Living armor. Tries to do something. Sunstrike sets up. Actually brings Shadow pretty low. Remember, he has the Aegis, but they could finish it off here. He uses the BKB. I think he would have dodged it anyhow. But now the BKB will be on cooldown. He's got the TP. Can he make it out? S4 does not have the Blink Dagger. The Berserker's Call, not quite there. And they will live. Aegis still in tow. Two minutes till it expires, but they will hold on to it. In the meantime, though, Fifth Beyond takes the Tier 2 in the top lane. It would have been actually a really valuable pick if OG managed to scout him out because... Shadow was greedy with his BKB because he wanted to preserve the Aegis. He wanted oh. to give them a chance to win. Oh, okay. They're going to catch here? Unrelenting pressure. I mean, No-Tail's going to live, but Song stuck on cooldown immediately. And now for the next two minutes, he has to play a lot more conservative. It just seems like the pace of the game like changed on a dime. It's like that one engagement in the jungle just flipped everything on its head and like this brood hero that wasn't really doing that much and was kind of... I was undervaluing it a bit, just comes into its own, takes towers, you know, kills S4 pretty much solo, without the use of Battle Trance, by the way, which I really have yet to see the combination of the two, which it'll be terrifying when it happens. But yeah. for now, it's it's kind of just OG scrambling to find something out on the map, you know, keep one lane out if you can. It's just crazy to me that, I guess the in a way, the Brood can keep one lane pushed in constantly, whereas Naga normally wants to push out all three lanes simultaneously. No Tail's having a very hard time doing that because he's either getting ran at or the Brood's just shoving in one lane and he's very scared to go to the others. Well, it's a tier two tower in the mid lane. Turned to rubble by Team Random. Still that tier one in the bottom lane standing, but getting more and more map control. They'll find Jerax up top. They've got the Sentry Ward down. Manta from Faith Beyond. Secures an easy kill despite the overgrowth. No tail trying to get that Octarine core, but still pretty far away. Doesn't even have the soul booster yet. Well, they do force Faith Beyond to move across the map. I guess he's just going to set up shop and bottom now because there's still a tier one. And yeah. he's probably just going to, you know, push those two towers, keep that lane pushed in. The rest of his team is assuming OG's jungle. And now they're kind of at the stage, you know, Lincoln's now purchased on Blink. It's going to be a lot harder to take him out. Yeah, he's also they recovered quite well. Yeah, his landing phase was not good. He died like, what, four or five times, something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's gone for kind of a different itemization, but it's it's working for him. Of all the embers we've seen uh, yesterday and today, I don't think we've seen Maelstrom until now. But it's working for him this game, and definitely a tool that lets you farm to kind of give you some extra damage in team fights and also allow you to farm neutrals very effectively. Yeah, cheap efficiency. That's the name of the game. It's Maelstrom. Right. Um, let's see. Roshan is going to be up soonish, a couple of minutes. And then, oh man, can OG even fight it? I guess they do. They do have like the wombo combo. They have the potential to land a really good song into the static storm and then kinetic field with the the meteor deafening and whatnot. Yeah. But it seems like they've kind of been missing a few beats. You know, the first game they played against. Team Random, they, they were really on point with it. Every single one was, like, perfect. In this game, it feels like they've messed up a lot of them. And yeah. because of that, they're just hurting a lot more than they would be normally at this stage in the game. And sure, there's a lot of other things that go into it, but, you know, normally they're, they're team fighting and everything is immaculate most of the time. Kind of surprising to see uh, the fumbles so far that we've seen this game. Ana is starting to get pretty big, though. He's got the Octarine core now, and BKB is going to be coming out next. So that Wombo combo gets scarier by the minute, even though Troll is getting more and more farmed. 
they have options and no tail is still continuing to recover he's closing that gap on the troll hot on his heels mystic staff only a few hundred gold away so octarine core will be there soon and before you know it that ultimate's going to have a 45 second cooldown a big jump from uh, the 120 that he's been forced to deal with so they'll have that readily available as we see random five hero smoke here in the mid lane let's see what they do with it looks like the game plan now is just run down mid just get there as fast as possible. <laughs> Fight around the webs. Well, not I mean, gonna OG find are, anything here. Yeah, they're super scared, and I mean they should be. If they if they mess up and they lose a fight, like at this particular stage, it's potential racks. You know, depending on how many buybacks you have. The only person who can buy back right now is No Tail. So, oh, very wow. tense situation. Oh, better safe than sorry at this stage. I'm surprised that least... Faithbeyond didn't just stay bottom, though. Like, they're still a tier 1. Yeah. No, Triant keeps healing it up. They've gotten it very low a couple of times, but... ...haven't been quite able to finish it off. OG have stopped the bleeding, though. You look at that gold graph, and it's plateaued and then come back down a little bit. 35 minutes in, a 6,000 net worth lead is... Not a huge deal. The experience lead may be a bigger problem. You pull out that level chart, and we're going to have three level 25 he uh, heroes before too long. And right now, OG does not have anyone that's even got the level 20 talent yet. So big disparity yeah. in terms of experience. It's the Naga effect, though. Like, what happens is the Naga pushes out all the lanes, and the illusions don't grant experience, and no one else can farm the lanes that the Naga Siren is pushing. So hmm. because of that, you know, you're, like, sticking together, doing all this weird stuff. Ice Ice, looking for something. TP's out a plenty. Looks like everyone is out. S4 does not have a TP, but he does have BKB, as well as Blink Dagger. I think he should be good, unless they get really lucky here. And he'll be fine. But yeah, the, there comes a time in every Dota game where you have a Naga on your team that sometimes it can become detrimental. And it's not really the Naga's fault. It's just that you have to push the lanes all the time. That's what Naga does. That's what makes the hero super annoying to deal with. It's just that you're taking away farm from everyone else, and you're pretty much ensuring that no one is going to get EXP, because those those lane creeps are never going to die in the vicinity of your heroes. So because of the fact that Team Random took so many good team fights consecutively and are able to just control the map as they are, they're going to be able to get EXP on all their heroes. OG will not. There will probably be like two or three high level heroes, max, and then everyone on a random will be able to get levels, and then the team fights will dictate if OG is able to get their supports to where they want to be. Yeah, check this out Naga Siren going for the Diffusal Blade. Yeah, we talked about that earlier in the Naga versus Medusa matchup, but here it's just going to be a Diffusal for the Mana Burn utility in two fights. Up top, we'll see S4 initiated on BKB, pop by Broodmother, Ice Ice with the dunk. S4 actually doing some decent return damage, but they settle for Ana first. Allows S4 to blink away, but he still might not be completely in the clear. Living Armor helping pick him back up as Blink finally connects. He roots him, and Axe will fall. It's a set of kills for Team Random. Two cores, big pickoffs, and they might try to push off this. Yeah, there's no buyback on S4, and they have a troll sitting right outside the base. They got the Dazzle as well for the sustain. They're going to have the Weave Armor as well with the Solar Crest. This is incredibly hard for OG to stop. Well, they glyph right away. Living Armor on the tower. It buys it some time. Buyback on the Invoker. Popped, but Axe does not have one. He's in the grave for 35 seconds. Naga Siren uses the ultimate. They sort of set up the combo, but the Meatball doesn't really hit anything, and the EMP doesn't connect either. BKB used by Shadow, and he's just going to focus structures. No tail force back, not a hell of a lot he can do. Disarm from Invoker does slow things down. Now Jerax comes in, he does have the overgrowth. Sunstrike split across two heroes, doesn't do that much. The melee barracks fall, and now our Radiant team trying to disengage. Overgrowth comes out, Faith Beyond falls, and Shadow will get left behind. OG end up getting two kills, but remember, they had to buy back, and on top of that, they still didn't hold the melee barracks. Yeah, I mean, I got the of the more valuable heroes i guess out of the buyback so at the end of the day it's probably about as good as they could have asked for considering the heroes that got picked off before the fight started right it, it's still though it shows how difficult it is you know when you don't have that magical dps there is kind of a silver lining though is that 
if the brood and the axe don't, or sorry, the brood and the troll don't buy back, OG will get Roche. And that could actually open up an opportunity for, you know, OG themselves to force Team Random into a similar position that they were just in. Yep, slowly but surely. Invoker will drop the Sunstrike for some extra damage. And it looks like Team Random, not too wise. There will be a TP from the Ember Spirit. We'll scout this out. Ana slowly trying to take down Roche. BKB gets used by S4 and won't be able to find much avail with it. They break the link into Blink. Fly glimpses him back. This could be a kill. S4 ready and waiting. And Sunstrike will bring him down. Now Roche ripe for the taking. This should be easy for OG. Three heroes dead. No buybacks will come out. And they will use the song just in case. Meanwhile, up top, Ice Ice, he does finish off the Disruptor. But he's going to pay with his life here. Set up from the Yules right, right into S4. Berserker's call. Well, Dunk doesn't connect, but Sunstrike's there. And Ana will get yet another. Now number three on net worth. So in the end, works out pretty darn well for OG. They get Roche, Aegis, and a couple of kills. I think Team Random were just being ultra greedy with how they played that. Like, they could have bought back on one a hero. Not, you don't even need to buy back both. Just buy back on one. And that'll be enough to deter OG from just sitting there and being able to kill the Roche. But what they did was they tried to buy time with the Ember and the Earthshaker so that they didn't have to buy out so they can get the best of both worlds, right? So they can get the Roshan stalled and fight it and potentially win because that would just straight up win them the game because they would all have buyouts just in case things went like really poorly for them. But instead, they end up getting some heroes picked off. Sure, they didn't have to use buybacks, which means they'll have it for this defense, but it felt like they were trying to get way too much. This is pretty scary. OG doing a lot of damage to this tower. Glyph is used, but the siege continues, and with two dead, they can't really stop it. Another tier 3 tower down. Troll comes charging in, but he gets Yule Scepter. Jerax will go down as Faith Beyond pops the BKB. Song of the Siren will not stop him. And Snare not available. No mana on the Naga. As now S4 left behind pops the BKB. Blade Mail follow up damage from Ana, but it's not going to be enough. Invoker falling very quickly. Axe also goes down. Nice deafening blast on three. Able to blink away. And he will live. Nicely played. But OG do lose quite a bit there. Well, they got the tier three, which at the very least opens up the opportunity to get shrines. And shrines are actually a fairly big deal. I mean, if you look at it from this perspective, Team Random got the mid melee barracks, but they're playing against a Naga Siren. So it's not like a super big deal. It's annoying for OG that they're going to get like less income from that lane. But I think in some ways, because they haven't killed the shrines either, that there's still an opportunity for OG to potentially even this up if they find the right engagements. The other thing too is, you know, Fly is very close to Aghanims. And that item is crazy strong. Like, if you get caught by Song and you don't BKB, and this is probably one of the absolute strongest things about this, this particular combination of heroes, you cannot BKB afterwards because the Song will overlap with the Static Storm and then you will never be able to BKB and you will just die. So... Yeah. There kind of comes the stage where the Disruptor comes into this really, really scary state of, oh god, if we get songed in a bad way, we can just get wiped out because of the Aghanims. Now, one of the other things to remember, Butterfly up on Naga, so evasion on these illusions, which they don't have a great solution for either. Uh, MK... Oh, never mind, MKB is up on Troll. Never mind, I take it back. Troll is well equipped. Yeah, he's going straight into Satanic as well, so he's going to ditch the Vlads. Uh, that'll probably be his sixth slot. Obviously, he can still get bots and Moonshard, but... Yeah. Yeah, Shadow has been uh, farming exceptionally well this game. Yeah, no Tails finally pulled ahead. He's got about a 5k margin on him, but that'll happen once things start to get this late. There's that Aghanim Scepter you were talking about. Jerax actually working on 1-2, only 400 gold away on the tree end. He's got the gem now. But Tree Ags, also a potential turning point in this game in favor of OG. Ice Ice sets up mid lane onto Invoker. Follow-up damage is there, and say goodbye to the Aegis. Oh, OG on the way in. Here's the setup Oh, they no can catch the troll. This is the debut to fly. Static Storm does not... Oh, there it is. Troll Warlord gets low. S4 trying to finish him off, but he can't quite do it. 
BKB's popped a plenty. It's No-Tail doing the big damage here. They finally bring down the troll. Ice Ice somehow still alive. Faith Beyond brings down the Treant. Blink comes back in to do a lot of damage, but No-Tail and Ana are doing so much. The double Octarine cores are sustaining them through this fight, and the Ember Spirit just doesn't have it. It's an ultra kill for No-Tail. A two for four. The Brood just barely survives because he's able to make it to the high ground. A very convincing fight once more. They're going to... I think they actually just lost the game. I actually just think they lost because they don't have any buybacks. Bottom is completely open. Ana doesn't know, though. He's scared. He's playing... He's playing back. He doesn't want to, to give anything away. No tail. He's got bots in 20 seconds. Axe is coming in. That was like... My goodness, you could not have actually gotten a better engagement if you're OG. They go on yeah. the hero that has Aegis. He has BKD in his backpack, so when he comes back up, he's got magic immunity, pretty much. They catch the troll with the Aghanim Static Storm. He can't BKB. He's dropped super low. No Satanic. So he can't even heal himself, even if he was able to pop the BKB in the first place. Even with S4 biffing on the dunk, they still kill him. Like, oh man, that, that has oh. to hurt so bad for Team Rand. The They're going to lose they the catch Brood the Broodmother. Well. She does have a buyback, uses it right away, but Barracks will fall. Ana just pushing them back. EMP, Deafening Blast, Brood trying to press forward to save the Barracks, but Melee have already gone down, has to use the BKB to survive. Now Song of the Siren just for setup. Earthshaker came out almost like he was looking for a dunk, but not going to be able to find it. The Tier 2 Tower mid did go down, and OG will continue the siege. Everybody's still kind of topped off. I guess they're low on mana, so they will retreat. But two lanes of barracks down, and I think you're right, Draskal. That last whiff team fight might have just cost them the game. OG now happily in control. You look at that gold graph, and they are in the lead. I mean, they didn't get Megid, so they're, they're, when you're not Megid, there's over. always a chance. Yeah, but the, it's not over. The but... problem is it's double laned against the Naga. That's like... Ooh, that's a rough place to be. Especially when there's only one MKB uh, carrier on your team, and that's the troll. Like, he needs to be the one killing the illusions at this point. They don't have any, like, hexes or mana drains or anything to be able to reliably get those illusions off the map fast. Man, that that team fight was actually so hard to watch, because they didn't know that he had Aghanims. Exactly. Because there's no way they jump him like that if they know the Disruptor has Ags, because they're, ju they're just going to kill the troll. You know, Shadow is feeling soup tanky before that point. He's like, oh yeah, whatever. If I get Static Storm, I'll just BKB. It's not a problem. Yeah, absolutely. That, that is one of the best <laughs> Aghanims reveals on Disruptor I think I've ever seen in terms of catching an enemy off guard. Now, you always talk about Blink Dagger reveals and that kind of stuff, but an absolute game changer here. So going back to buyback status, uh, what do we got? Brood, the only one on cooldown. So not as bad as it could be. But for Team Random, hanging on by a thread. And now with Tree and Agonims, he's going to start to take over this area. He actually doesn't have that many trees down yet, but he is going to take over this forest, Draskal. Yeah, I mean, it's only a 29-second cooldown. Like, pretty much 30, I guess, if you want to count it that way with the cooldown reduction talent. But it's kind of that thing that we were joking about during the draft when you get to this stage in the game. When the Agonims is up and the Naga has all the items she needs, that the lanes are just never going to push out. It's like, you got to jump somehow, find the picks and the important heroes at the beginning of the fight, and just kind of like run at them as hard as you can and hope that it's going to work. It's a very, very tough spot to be right now if you're Team Random. Tornado comes... Doesn't find anything. Ana is decked out, though. That's a Shiva's guard now, in addition to everything else. Nine second BKB still. Initiation. Song of the Siren. Oh, Jesus. Oh, wait. Fly's not there. Fly's not there. Well, Slam Dunk comes out. It does actually nothing to Ana. Now Sunstrike. But, yeah. Kind of whiff from OG. I mean, uh, not the end of the world. Ana does use the BKB. It's a really short I mean, it's going to... I mean, not yeah, it's going to be after 25 20 seconds. seconds. So it's not a big deal. Even the Disruptor ult. Pretty short cooldown. 70 seconds. Not that bad. Well, considering how potent it is at this stage in the game. Heck yeah. yeah. Super good. As for the one carrying the gem right now, so Brood needs to be kind of careful. Working on an Abyssal Blade for Faith Beyond. Big lockdown. Already has the Skull Basher. 
OG just being very cautious here. Slow sieging with the Naga Illusions. As well as the Forge Spirits. But this tower, it's going down. I mean, they are doing pretty effective chip damage. It's just, it's like the slow death by a thousand cuts, you know? Yep. They're just going to keep doing it. All right, here we go. This is Ember Spirit. No tr troll. But they're still going to set it up with the Static Storm Kinetic Field. He does get helped out by the Dazzle. Shallow Grave comes. BKB from Shadow as he jumps out. But it's not doing a hell of a lot. It does repel some of OG. Now Faith Beyond pops his BKB. Faith Beyond comes out, tries to protect his troll friend. But Ana sends out the tornado, isolates the troll. Now the overgrowth from Jerax. Troll disarmed. S4 reinitiates, jumps onto. Oh, troll actually getting really low. Another grave comes out. Ana throws him up. I think this is going to be the end of the troll. He does have a buyback. Maybe not the end for Team Random. But they will lose Ice Ice as well. Ana so healthy still. These Octarine cores just doing so much. Double buyback. Tier 3 tower taking damage, though, as Naga Illusions continue to push in. Death by a now thousand is... cuts indeed. I mean, you, everyone's been in this situation, so I think everyone can empathize with the whole, oh god, the Naga Siren's pushing in our side lanes, oh god, we can't, like, win the fight and defend our base at the same time. It's yeah. a very, very rough situation to be in. So two buybacks used, uh, more economic damage. OG furthering that lead. And now they pretty much just have to do that one more time. Cheese been sitting in the pit. The aged Gouda as Roche respawns. So maybe this will be the, the nail in the coffin. Again, OG did finish off that tier uh, three tower. So it's just barracks. However, there is a blip. Overgrowth. Yeah, he's just, also, he's just doing it to kill the creeps. Pretty short cooldown, too. Here's the troll. Is the disruptor here. There it is. Static Storm Kinetic Field. They'll set it up. But Broodmother's there. Troll gets to the side as S4 pops his BKB, tries to isolate him. But they don't have the damage on Troll. Meanwhile, on the backside, Fly taking a lot of damage. S4 falls. And it's not looking great for OG. Ana has to pop the BKB, but he's kind of isolated. He gets bashed up by the Broodmother. And that'll be the end of him. OG lose three. And Team Random have actually held this. And now they're going to push back the other way. They might be able to force some buybacks, but they need to get back and defend as creeps are killing some of their safety structures. I think Ana actually really messed up there. He deafening the troll when he was hitting S4 with Blade Mail. I think if he didn't deafening and he used like another damage spell, he probably would have killed the troll. Yeah. Instead and he also of... pushed him out. Yeah, he pushed him out as well. So now, like... All of a sudden, Team Random have this opportunity to actually go for the Roche. I mean, sure, there's Nog Illusions there, but Mid's not pushed in. So if Mid's not pushed in, there's there's nowhere else to really deal damage unless No Tail uh -oh. wants a TP. It's going to Song. Well, there's nothing else. No I think they might need buybacks. Oh, no, they're, they're just going to let it go. Yeah. They do use BKBs. Ice Ice comes to scout things out. And that'll be it. Aegis of the Immortal goes the way of Shadow. Well, their base is going to be in trouble here soon. They have a little bit of time because they have tier four is okay. Wings are just going to immediately back. So it's when you're at this stage in the game and you just get Roshan away. I mean, sure, you got the Ember to counter push and stuff, but at, at some point you're going to have to fully commit to the fight, right? And that means your base is going to take damage. So when that happens, you need to either have a hero who can go back or you can use the tier fours as kind of like this buffer to where that's like your time to be able to take the fight without losing too much. Because once the tier fours are gone, then you're just getting chipped on your throne, and that's a really, really hard thing to, to yeah. deal with. So it's going to get a little bit harder, I think, um, for Team Random to just really leave the base for obvious reasons. And there's still a Tier 1 bottom. So if they're going to go for the win, I don't know if they just claim the, the money from this lane or if they want to go just all in mid. Like, <laughs> I'm actually kind of torn on what the right call is here because it's... It's very unlikely that I think they're going to be able to get bottom all the way pushed in with mid as well, because yeah. otherwise they'll just get Megid, right? It's uh, it's being stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's a precarious situation, no doubt. Uh, also, Refresher has come out on the Treant, so uh, double overgrowth now in these fights. 
And his trees have actually been cleared out. Uh, do they have quelling plates? Yeah, it looks like they do. Ice Ice has been carrying one around, uh, as has the Dazzle. And they've actually been dealing with the tree and Agonis pretty effectively. Look at that mini-map, and there aren't really that many down. It's pretty good. Yeah, they've been pretty diligent about it. They have been off that side of the map for a while, though, if you think about it. Because they lost the fight, then they took Roche, no one bought back on the side of OG. Uh, and then, you know, they, they have just now, like for the first time, gone back over there. They're going to go for the song play here. All right, Ember Spirit, he's going to be locked down. No options. Static Storm, Kinetic Field. The combo they need, Ember, of course, does have a buyback here. Else will be respawning in 90 seconds. Can they hold? That is steady. the question. Well, probably. Will Ember have to buy back, I think, is the more pressing question. Doesn't look like they're going to pressure it. I mean, it's pretty dangerous. It's pretty... It, you're, you're basing everything off of buybacks. So... Right now, everyone on the side of OG has buyback. Three heroes on the side of Team Random do not. For obvious reasons, we know that. They don't. So they're playing around the idea that everyone always has buyback because that's just what you do. You just assume. Right. So it's very, very tough for them to commit. Oh, here we go. Initiation on to Ana, set up by the uh, Earthshaker, but he gets slam dunked as S4 counter re uh, initiates. Hex comes out on the Broodmother. Follow up Sunstrike. It's a set of kills. And all of a sudden, three in the grave. Buyback from the Brood. Dazzle also gets picked off in the fray. Looks like No-Tail was able to solo him in the base while that fight was going on. Now the second buyback comes. It's a 5v3. Troll manages to get off the BKB. And OG will just disengage. They see the buybacks and they'll be happy with that economic damage. They only have to do it one more time. I mean, like we talked about earlier, the song committal is not that big of a deal. Very low cooldown, only 45 seconds. They didn't commit the Static Storm either, which means that if they walk in, they get that combination off one time, you know, Faith Beyond, no buyback, Blink, no buyback. They catch one of those heroes, they're not, they're just gone. Yeah. Now, Troll's buyback, as well as Earthshaker's, both coming up in about 30 seconds. Troll has the money for it, Earthshaker doesn't. They've lost the range barracks, Melee, the last one standing, Illusion's actually doing a lot of work here. There's no Echo Slam for 40, and Song of the Siren oh from no actually does keep the Troll Warlord alive. But Static Storm Kinetic Field connects on three. Oh my, it's huge. The follow-up from Jerex as well. He's refreshed. That's the second overgrowth. The troll goes down. The ember falls. And this brute mother is going to be following suit. Now troll comes back to life, but it doesn't matter. GG's called, and that'll be it. OG manages to take the series 2-1 over Team Random. But my god, did they make them work for it, Drasko. One hell of best of three. Man, you know, you asked me like 20, 30 minutes ago, I, th I would probably say that Team Random would have won this game.